Hello everyone, Tobias White here, and I'm going to show you um, a series of three videos uh, that's going to cover how to use color blend modes, uh, FX options, and um, photos to create a variation of texture and color for shadow and light. So the first thing we're going to start off with is how to do value that also has color to it because light and shadow have color to it. Shadows are often cooler and light is often warmer. So we're going to start off with some simple spheres. So these are the base colors of what we have up here in these little examples. And uh, so right now we're just picking on value and temperature of, uh, of that value, the, the, the color in that value range. And so uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to lay down the shadow. Although you can lay down the light first, it's all about preference and how you want to uh, do your order of operations, but we're going to start off with shadow. So what you're going to do is you're going to paint in with a soft brush uh, a really light toned neutral blue. This is a nice go-to color. Um, and right now, this does not look anywhere near what we want. But we haven't gotten to the good part, and that's the color blend mode. On your layer section, right up here, we have our color blend mode, okay? And uh, it actually is also described as channels, I think, or something like that. But um, I've always been told it's color blend mode. So what you do is you're going to select this option, and you're going to go and you're going to choose multiply. And what this is going to do, it's going to interact with the layer below. And it's going to interact with it almost like it was watercolor. So you lay it down, when you lay, work with watercolor and you lay it down, the value increases, increases, increases. It almost kind of burns the color too. But on the same token, you see there's actual, it's not just value, there's actual color in the shadow. And we can control this value by using the opacity button here on the layer. Now we want to lock this layer and we're going to go to the next thing and we're going to add our light. Now you're going to want to pick a warm light because we went with a cool shadow so we want a warm light, and that's generally how it goes. If you have a cool light, your shadow is going to be even cooler. Although sometimes you can have a warm shadow. Um, it makes for interesting results, and it's very bizarre when it does it, but sometimes it looks correct. So sometimes you have to play it by ear, especially when it comes to color. Um, so I'm going to pick this pale yellow, and we're going to lay down. And even maybe put a, uh, you can even put a little white in there too, if you want, um, at, at its center. But we have it at 100%, we have it right here. So your next thing you want to choose is you want to choose from this section right here. You have overlay, soft light, hard light, vivid light, linear light, pin light, and hard mix. One of the ones that I often go to is soft light or pin light. Soft light is for that very nice, subtle, gentle light that just kind of caresses the object. It's not intense. But this is not how we have an example. We have this very intense light. So in this, in this we're going to go to pin light. Pin light works with light colors. If you put a dark color with pin light, it doesn't look right. But it doesn't even show up, I don't think. But with the light colors, it does wonders. And even though I, I think this is even a little bit too intense. And so we're going to punch this down, bringing down the opacity to something that we feel is a little bit more appropriate. And it's still stronger than soft light, but it's not too overpowering at the same time. And uh, this is a great way to um, add to speed painting techniques. 
And in order to do this is that you'll block in all your local colors first for um, you know, your shapes and, and whatnot. Then you come in and you use this technique to quickly lay down value without having to worry about uh, the color and the color shift of the value that you're working on. And so you can quickly get your color value and all of it get in a nice rough uh, render shape and this gives you a, a, a range of color. And once you've gone that down, then you can start refining it. And uh, because you'll just uh, copy it all together, do a, a, a copy merge over it, which is done with Control Shift Alt E, and now I'll create an entire layer right here that is uh, a copy of everything that was uh, shown on the screen. But we're not going to do that for right now. So, once again, this is a great way to get your light and shadow that has a temperature range. And this is, again, great for uh, speed painting. In the next video, I'm going to be talking how to, about how to use brush strokes in the FX, uh, the FX um, button to create a variety of textures, as you can see up here in these examples. See you then.